Even though the Atwater's prairie chicken is similar in size to a domestic chicken, it is a grouse and the southernmost member of its family. These birds have inspired Native American traditions and enchanted nature enthusiasts with their courtship display, known as booming, for generations. Atwater's prairie chickens live in coastal tall grass prairies found only along the coasts of Texas and Louisiana. These prairies consist of a diverse mixture of grasses, wildflowers, and other herbaceous plants. It was on these once vast prairies where the magnificent birds reproduced, reared their young, found food and shelter, and sustained their lives. At the turn of the 20th century, nearly one million Atwater's prairie chickens thrived on six million acres of coastal prairie along the Texas and Louisiana Gulf coasts. Their numbers plummeted as native prairie habitat disappeared in the face of urban growth, agricultural conversion, habitat fragmentation, and the introduction of invasive plants and animals. In March 1967, the Atwater's prairie chicken was placed on the endangered species list with an estimate of only 1,070 birds left in the wild. The bird's decline has been a story of loss and setbacks, often told with little hope for survival. However, several dedicated, determined organizations and committed individuals have been working to write a very different end to the story. For example, in the early 1970s, Texas parks and wildlife biologists began relocating endangered populations of Atwater's prairie chickens. One effort involved using helicopters to net the birds from the dangerous runways at Ellington Air Force Base. They were then transported to other prairie habitats. Meanwhile, the efforts of other committed groups resulted in the establishment of a national wildlife refuge named for the Atwater's prairie chicken. This refuge has also enabled the restoration of thousands of acres of native prairie habitat in partnership with private landowners. Today, the Atwater's prairie chicken can be found in the wild in two locations, at the National Wildlife Refuge and on private lands in Goliad, Texas. Ongoing efforts by several zoological institutions have helped create a captive breeding program. In 1993, Fossil Rim Wildlife Center was the first to breed the birds in captivity. This program ensures a source stock of Atwater's prairie chickens to repopulate or supplement existing populations that are threatened by hurricanes and other natural disasters inherent to coastal prairie life. Fossil Rim continues to maintain a protected breeding stock today. The Houston Zoo began participating in the mid-1990s Their efforts were further expanded with the Houston Zoo's partnership with NASA about a decade or so later. NASA provided additional area for the installation of breeding pens on the Johnson Space Center campus. These breeding programs are structured to provide each prairie chicken with a healthy genetic foundation and ensure that the gene pool of the captive population is genetically diverse. Maintaining this program involves multiple, complex components and a great deal of collaboration among partners involved in the breeding, hatching, feeding, care and protection of these young birds. Even in captivity, males will exhibit their courtship displays and females will respond. Males and females are uniquely paired, and each egg that is produced is tracked from the moment it is laid. Eggs are then artificially incubated and carefully monitored. 
Candling is a method of monitoring that uses a light source to observe the growth and development of an embryo inside an egg. After about 26 days of incubation, a chick will hatch. Once hatched, the young chicks are fed and well cared for, ensuring proper nutrition and overall good health. Atwater's prairie chickens are social, flocking birds and are raised in pens together. When the young chickens have reached adequate weight, they will hitch a ride in the transport trailer as they transition from a life in rearing pens to their permanent homes roaming the coastal prairie. Even after the chickens arrive on the prairie, they will spend about two weeks in acclimation pens. Here, the birds are protected from predators, and staff will continue to care for them as they become acclimated to the sights and sounds of wild prairie. Their habitat is carefully managed to provide the best possible conditions for their success. Habitat treatments, such as controlled burning and managed grazing, mimic historic natural processes with which the Atwater's prairie chicken evolved. Management of invasive species, both plant and animal, must be given special attention. Spikes are placed on fence posts to prevent hawks and owls from perching and threatening the birds. Most importantly, researchers found that red imported fire ants consume insects that are critical food sources for juvenile Atwater's prairie chickens. Inevitably, there will be losses, and some birds will not survive. That, too, is part of life on the prairie. But by February, a few male Atwater's prairie chickens will start booming. This elaborate courtship ritual will include feet drumming in a distinctive dance, with air sacs inflating and a reverberating boom sound emitting as the females look on. And if all goes well, the first in the wild eggs will arrive by the end of March. The cycle of life continues on the prairie. We have more hope than ever to recover this species. Although one natural disaster could devastate the wild populations, with decades of studying, breeding, and monitoring, we now have a robust captive breeding program to replenish these birds. The Atwater's prairie chicken continues to capture the heart of everyone it meets. And as an indicator of our environment, its future is now interwoven with ours. The story of how it has survived is a testament to the passion and commitment of a broad collaborative effort, all with the shared hope that this plucky little grouse will soldier on. <laughs>